2024 is shaping up to be another year of Jurassic World Evolution 2 support, according to Frontier's new um, report. And I've got a few more ideas that I would like to share for potential DLCs that could come to the game. Now, there are some returning ideas here, ideas focused on the Cenozoic era particularly, as well as the Permian and the Jurassic period, and potentially the Triassic could even see some attention. So without further ado, let's get into it. Starting off with the Permian Species Pack, we have Inostransavia. Inostransavia is a large carnivorous therapsid of the late Permian of Western Russia and South Africa. It is the largest known species of Gorgonopsid with a robust skeleton and exceptionally large canine teeth to assist in bringing down its prey, such as Scutosaurus. It's thought that Inostransavia would have used its large teeth to deliver a similar killing technique to the famous Smilodon. Scutosaurus is a large paraeosaurid parareptile covered with bony plates or scutes across its body, which gives the genus its name. Scutosaurus is a herbivorous species, and as they would have been living in a semi-arid desert environment, they would have had to wander for long distances searching for food and water, with which their squat locomotion assisted with. Anteosaurus is a large carnivorous dinocephalian synapsid from South Africa during the Middle Permian. Anteosaurus was the largest known carnivorous non-mammalian synapsid of the Permian period, and it is thought that the bony ridges on their heads was used for intraspecific combat rather than their teeth that would inflict severe damage to both animals. Mosstrops was a large therapsid from southern Africa during the Middle Permian. They had small heads and thick, strong necks. It was a herbivorous animal, like the later Scutosaurus, and had a similar squat gait to wander searching for suitable food. Due to the thickness of their skulls, it is thought that they would have exhibited headbutting during respective seasons. Update features to come along with this. The Raptor compound would be a nice modular attraction to be added to better display the Jurassic World Raptors. And also Tyrannosaurus Rex Kingdom would be another great feature to see, complete with grandstands, the log viewing gallery, and redwood trees, as well as the Paddock Nine Gate. Speak of T-Rex, a Jurassic World T-Rex variant would be great to get the correct skull shape of the Jurassic World version. And I would just love to see some other skins added for potentially 2015 and 2018, where the T-Rex had less scars than it does in Dominion. And also a Jurassic Park T-Rex variant with an accurate head to the animatronic. That would also be a cool feature to be added. Another suitable variant would be the 1997 Mementosaurus, giving it a more horizontal posture and a longer neck and a longer tail. Moving on to the Cenozoic Species Pack, we have the Smilodon. Smilodon was a large Macarodontid and one of the most famous extinct animals due to its iconic saber teeth, a trait shared by many others of its kind. Populated was the largest species of Smilodon from South America, and with its heavy build it would have hunted some of the largest prey of its time. And those would include species such as ground sloths, toxodon, and giant armadillos. Mammothus primogenius, or the woolly mammoth, is perhaps the most iconic extinct animal aside from the dinosaurs. Its large tusks, small ears, and small tail help conserve heat and protect it against attack, as well as a thick coat of hair to protect it from the cold in its tundra home. As with modern elephants, mammoths would have been highly sociable animals, living in matriarchal herds led by a single dominant older female. Calancan is a large forest rocket or terror bird from the middle Miocene of Argentina. It was large, flightless, and had long legs tipped with sharp claws, with a single large inner toe claw similar to those adorned by dromaeosaurid dinosaurs. Before the migration of mammalian carnivores from North America, Calancan and other terror birds were the apex predators of South America. Megatherium is a species of giant ground sloth from South America of the Pleistocene era. Its large size allowed it to feed at heights that many other herbivores at the time could not reach. Like, a, like its modern relative, the giant anteater, Megatherium would have walked on the side of its feet, with its claws facing inward as they are too long to be held flat foot. Megatherium 
though primarily quadrupedal, it has been found to also be capable of bipedal locomotion. It has been proposed that Megatherium was mostly hairless, comparable to an elephant due to its large size. Update features coming along with this one. Adding in multiple Jurassic World attractions as you can see here, like a lagoon addition such as the Mosasaurus feeding area. That would be a great combination of the viewing stands and the shark feeder, as well as various new hotel types, the Jurassic World Amphitheater, an outdoor golf course, and perhaps an aquatic park as well. A new update feature could be custom map generation, being able to create islands, maps, coastal maps, and perhaps even inland maps. Full islands would be another great way to boost the flexibility that sandbox players would be able to have, as well as being able to select the biomes that you can use. Map additions could include mountains, rivers, waterfalls, a custom buildable area, beaches, canyons, volcanoes, glaciers, all sorts of terrain features that could be chosen by the player and perhaps even some island shapes of the Las Cinco Buenetes and Isla Nublar. The new variants of this update would be the novel Dilophosaurus, being a much larger, more accurately sized Dilophosaurus, perhaps even coming with a novel-inspired skin, as well as Jurassic Park Velociraptor variants and the JP3 Velociraptor male and female variants, allowing players to create their own versions of these iconic animals. Cretaceous Predator Pack. Megalania is a large monster lizard species from Australia during the Pleistocene. Its large size would have made it one of the apex predators of the continent at the time. Compared with modern monster lizard, it, it is possible that Megalania had a venom with an anticoagulant to prevent clotting and for its prey to bleed out from excessive blood loss. Hyenodon gigas is the largest species of hyenodon from the Middle Eocene to the early Miocene of Eurasia and North America. They may not have surpassed the size of the largest big cats, but were still formidable predators that brought down some of the biggest prey at the time. They may not have been able to run for long distances, rather relying on ambush to surprise their prey, and then using their powerful jaws and forelimbs to push their prey to the ground. Argentavis is a large species of terratornid bird of prey, similar in appearance to a modern condor or vulture. Its stout, strong legs with large toes allowed Argentavis to walk along the ground with ease. The wingspan of Argentavis is thought to be between 5 to 6 metres wide, making it one of the largest flying birds of all time. Like the modern secretary bird, the Argentavis was a largely terrestrial hunter. Otodus megalodon is the largest known predatory shark ever discovered, with teeth of the megalodon being found across the earth. It would have had a similar global presence to the great white sharks of today. Its large size allowed megalodon to hunt large prey such as whales. However, it suffered from competition from developing mammalian marine predators such as the whale Leviathan, as well as whales inhabiting cooler waters than the warm tropics that megalodon dwelled in, pushing it to starvation. Update features for this for this DLC. Some more new live feeders would be a cool addition, such as a deer, a shark, a cow, and a pig, being able to give your dinosaurs and other prehistoric creatures choice in their meals. Also adding marine interactions with flying creatures and those on land. That would be a great way to boost the popularity of the Mosasaurus being able to have it be a potential threat to any creature that comes too close to the lagoon. A new variant includes the Camp Cretaceous Spinosaurus variants, as well as several Stegosaurus skins inspired by Camp Cretaceous, such as the brown skin, the green skin with the, with the side stripe, the green spotted skin, and a blue Stegosaurus variant. The Cenozoic Prey Pack. Megacerops is a large odd toed brontothere from late Eocene North America. Though they may resemble a modern rhinoceros at first glance, this family is closer in relation to horses. It is adorned by a large Y shaped, blunt horn like structure on their snout. 
They were one of the largest land animals of their age, coming close to, to the size of a modern African forest elephant, the third largest animal living today. Specimens exposed in rainstorms gave the species the nickname of Thunder Beast by Native Americans that uncovered their fossils. Deuticurus is a large glyptodontid of, of Pleistocene South America. They are known for their large rounded armor on their backs and a large tail club that would have been used against other Deuticurus and large predators. Being alive during the Great American Interchange, its armor would have come in handy as defense against large mammalian predators from the north, like short-faced bears, macarodons such as Smilodon, and early jaguars. Moropus was a large, odd-toed undulate that lived in North America during the Miocene. This large herbivore, though it may not look like it, is closely related to modern rhinos, horses, and tapirs. Unlike modern undulates, however, these animals have claws instead of hooves, which, like those found on ground slopes, were used for both defense against predators and also for bringing high food down to an edible level. Paraceratherium is a large hornless relative of modern rhinoceros from the Oligocene of Eurasia. They are one of the largest land mammals that have ever walked the earth, only being surpassed by early elephants such as Paleoloxodon. A nasal incision in their skull indicate a possible prehensile upper lip similar to that of a black rhinoceros, or perhaps a trunk much like a tapir. Most terrestrial predators at the time were around the same size as a modern wolf, and would not have been large enough to bring down an adult paraceratherium. Possible update features for this DLC include a Jurassic World control center with a, a helipad complete, and perhaps also monorail junctions as an additional feature to create diverse trackways for your monorail to follow. A new skin would be the Jurassic World Mosasaurus skin, complete with green, blue, and gray coloration, lacking the red scales that are adorned by the current base Mosasaurus that are not present on the CGI model from the films. Also, an Allosaurus Fallen Kingdom variant, with, complete with a skin based on its appearance in the movie. The Jurassic Predator Pack. Yang Chuanosaurus is a large metriacanthosaurid theropod from China in the late Jurassic. It was the apex predator of its ecosystem, hunting various sauropods, stegosaurs, and anolithopods that lived in the area. The species is often depicted with brow ridges or crests that would have been used for display. Torvosaurus is a large megalosaurid theropod carnivore from both North America and Portugal of the late Jurassic, where they were an apex predator alongside species like Allosaurus. Torvosaurus would have preyed upon the sauropods, stegosaurs, and ornithopods of the region, much like the Allosaurus would. The species is identifiable compared to other Jurassic predators by their long, slender, rectangular skull. Sagisaurus is a small predatory coelophysid theropod from early Jurassic North America, where they would have hunted small animals and invertebrates. This species has never had a complete skeleton found, however. The species was featured as part of the original Jurassic Park. It was present in the park at the time of the 1993 events, but has never made a definitive appearance in the franchise. Pliosaurus is one of the largest predatory marine reptiles of the late Jurassic. This large pliosaur fed on many of the plesiosaurs of its area, such as Chimerosaurus. It is similar in appearance to the smaller Lyplurodon, but is significantly larger at 10 to 30 meters in length, compared to the original estimates of 15 meters. But despite this slight shrink, it was not as dramatic as Lyplurodon's size estimation of 25 meters, then shrinking to a 6 meter estimation. Update features for this DLC. The balloon ride from Jurassic Park Operation Genesis would be a great new attraction to be added. As well as Lookout Point from Camp Cretaceous, which had a both a gondola ride up to the top of the mountain and an overlooking um, viewpoint. And also hang glider rides would also be a cool addition to this attraction. Some new variants I would like to see would be a bulkier movie Carnotaurus variant, perhaps also adding two Car Carnotaurus skins for Toro, be that being his scar on the snout, and then when Toro was burned by the campers. 
as well as an option to remove scar features from skins such as the Carnotaurus, Allosaurus and Tyrannosaurus Rex 2022 skins, giving them a more naturalistic appearance and being able to be their own individual animals. The Jurassic World of Hadasaurus variant would be a good addition too, with a sleeker build and longer legs than the base currently has. Moving on, we have the Jurassic Prey pack. Turo Jiangosaurus is a large stegosaur of the late Cretaceous in China, found alongside other similar sized stegosaurs such as Huayangosaurus, Chunkingosaurus, and Gigant Spinosaurus. It is the best understood of the Chinese stegosaurs and was physically similar to the North American stegosaurus. Unlike other stegosaurs in the area, Turo Jiangosaurus likely did not possess shoulder spikes. Camphosaurus is a species of herbivorous ornithischian dinosaur from late Jurassic North America and potentially Europe as well. Being a smaller and swifter herbivore, Camphosaurus would likely have been a suitable prey source for many of the Morrison formations and most notable predators, such as Allosaurus, Torvosaurus, Ceratosaurus, and Sauropachnax, living alongside other ornithischians such as Nanosaurus and Dryosaurus. Shunosaurus was a medium sized sauropod from the late Jurassic of China. In the environment it shared with species like Hyangosaurus and Gastosaurus. Tunosaurus was perhaps one of the best adapted sauropods for combat as it was a similar size to many of the local predators and has been found to have adorned a tail club similar to that of an Ankylosaur that was tipped with two cone shaped spikes. Musaurus is a species of small sauropodomorph from the early Jurassic of southern Argentina. Like many prosauropods, Musaurus would have been quadrupedal at early life stages and later became more bipedal as it matured. In Michael Crichton's novel The Lost World, Musaurus was one of the first living dinosaurs experienced in the book, being encountered by Dr. Richard Levine and Diego on Isla Sauna. Some possible update features for this DLC. Adding caves as an option to be placed around the map would be a cool feature to let animals like Pro Parasaurolophus Lux and Dimetrodon experience the environments that they were showed in the film franchise and in Camp Cretaceous. Speaking of Camp Cretaceous, adding the treetop camp from the series would also be a great addition as a new form of accommodation for your guests. Some other new features could include a Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom Brachiosaurus skin and model and a Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom Baryonyx skin would be another great feature. Potentially also adding the Jurassic World website Baryonyx variant and the Jurassic World Edmontosaurus website variant that does not adorn the crest of the base game Edmontosaurus. Moving on to the Piscivorous Species Pack. Irritator is a medium-sized spinosaurid from the Romualdo Formation of Early Cretaceous Brazil in South America. It gets its name from the reflected feelings of the paleontologists that acquired the skull from fossil dealers that had damaged and altered its appearance. Recent studies suggest that it may have had a gular pouch similar to that of a modern pelican, and like other spinosaurs, it would have possessed a paddle-shaped tail to help pro with propulsion in water. Australoraptor was one of the largest dromaeosaurs from the wetlands of Lake Cretaceous, South America. With its slender snout and webbed feet, it was a perfectly adapted fish eater for thriving in riverine habitats. Given their size and their diet of fish and other small animals, the Australoraptor would likely have been a solitary hunter. The Loss of Dromaeus is a species of tapijarid pterosaur from the early Cretaceous of Brazil's Romualdo formation where it existed alongside a diverse range of other pterosaurs such as Tropignathus and Ciarodactylus, and the earlier Spinosaur Irritator. Their large crest was likely used for display but also inspired its name Seti, which is derived from the Egyptian deity of Set, which Velocidromus' crest resembles his crown. Esperonis was a large cormorant-like seabird from the late Cretaceous of the West Interior Seaway of North America. Their large feet are perfect flippers to give this bird great speed underwater. Unlike modern birds, Hesperonis had sharp needle-like teeth to catch fish. This sleek predator, however, fell prey to many larger animals like sharks, mosasaurs, and the predatory fish, Zephactinus. Some additional update features for this DLC. 
The addition of the Teratops Lodge from original Jurassic Park concept art would be a great feature to add to the Averys. Speaking of Averys, adding a 1997 Pteranodon variant and perhaps a 1997 concept of Geostermbergia would also be a great addition to the game. And also adding a 2015 Dimorphodon variant complete with Pycnofibers and being much larger than the 2022 variant. And lastly, the late Triassic pack. Saurosuchus is a large Pseudosuchian archosaur from Argentina of the late Triassic. Being largely quadrupedal, it was potentially an apex predator alongside the theropod dinosaur Herrerasaurus in the Ishigualasto formation. It was one of the largest of the Rarasuchians at a maximum of 8 meters long, behind the enormous 10 meter Fasolosuchus that was living nearby at the time. Platyosaurus is one of the Triassic's most famous dinosaurs, a basal herbivorous sauropodomor from the late Triassic of Europe. It was largely bipedal, likely only descending to four legs when getting really low to the ground to drink or to lay down. It used its long neck to reach up high into trees to browse where other herbivorous dinosaurs at the time could not. Eudimorphodon is a small pterosaur that has a similar body plan to later Jurassic pterosaurs such as Dimorphodon and Rampharynchus. The jaws of Eudimorphodon are packed with teeth. Despite its jaws only being 6, six centimeters long, there are 110 teeth that have been found on a specimen, with the front of the jaws having the greatest amount of these teeth. These teeth may be small, but are also strong, which are capable of catching and crushing prey such as crustaceans and fish. Simbospondylus is a large ichthyosaur from the middle Triassic of North America and Europe. It had a longer, more slender body plan compared to later ichthyosaurs that adopted a body shape similar to modern dolphins in the Jurassic. Simbospondylus yongorum is the largest marine predator discovered from the time, aside from the colossal Shastasaurus. Here are some possible update features for this DLC. The addition of the Hidden Adventure roller coaster and animatronic Jeep ride would be some great attractions for the guests to experience in your Jurassic worlds. As well as also a gentle giant's petting zoo with only relevant baby dinosaurs such as Triceratops, Stegosaurus, Parasaurolophus, Apatosaurus and Gallimimus. Some additional baby variants that could be added would be Ankylosaurus, Velociraptor, T-Rex, Brachiosaurus, Sinoceratops and the Pseudoceratops all of which had on-screen juvenile appearances. Genetic defects and advantages such as blindness, larger horns for ceratopsians, asymmetry and perhaps gen genetic mutations such as albinism, melanism, leucism and piebaldism would be great features to be added to the dinosaurs to give them a unique identity. New variants and skins could include a Parasaurolophus 2015 variant and skin, as well as a Jurassic World website variant of the Parasaurolophus with its brightly coloured skin. And a last feature that I would like to mention here would be more unique battle animations like T-Rex winning against medium carnivores in the style of the Fallen Kingdom scene, prologue and dominion battles between the Giganotosaurus and the T-Rex reflected in the game, Carnotaurus versus the Sinoceratops, Allosaurus and the Pseudoceratops, and Indominus Rex fighting the T-Rex and revolting Velociraptors from Jurassic World. Some other features I'd like to mention here before the video ends are the additions of hunting for Gigantoraptor and pack hunting for Utah Raptor. And there you have it. That is eight DLCs from Jurassic World Evolution 2 that I would personally like to see. Let me know what your favorite is down in the comments down below and which DLCs out of these and from my previous video you would like to see in the coming year. That is all for now, and I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.